Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, my name is Joshua Cooper. I am a doctor of physical therapy here at the uh, UF Health um, Norman Fixell Institute for Neurological Diseases. Um, today I'd like to talk with you all about um, a discussion on um, movement being medicine and the importance of exercise uh, in African Americans. And so the first question, you know, why is exercise important? Um, why is everyone telling me, hey, you know, you should be exercising, you, sh you should be moving? Um, and so um, exercise really is the physical medicine um, that your body and also your Parkinson's needs uh, in order to maintain and, and make improvements in your function. Um, exercise is often included as the treatment for um, many other conditions that um, African Americans may be exposed to or may have, uh, such as you know, arthritis, heart disease, uh, diabetes, um, and also high blood pressure. Um, the Parkinson's Foundation conducted a huge research study um, which really looked at um, exercise and Parkinson's and what they found was um, 2.5 hours per week or about 30 minutes five times per week um, was needed in order to see an improvement in a uh, patient's quality of life. So uh, really your quality of life is how you experience life. It's you know living healthy, living happily, um, and also having a, a really fulfilling life. And so all it takes is 30 minutes in order to see some of those benefits. Um, and so really, uh, exercise has a few other benefits, more specifically to Parkinson's, such as um, improving stiffness, um, assisting with balance, um, helping out with your walking. Um, it can also help combat fatigue and uh, low energy levels as well. Um, so if nothing else, I really want you all just to grab uh, the, this big theme of uh, movement being medicine and uh, using movement as a way to help your body uh, and treat your Parkinson's. And so one of the easy things to do for um, uh, movement is to go for a walk. Um, rec I recommend about 30 minutes per day like we talked about earlier. You know, the research shows that's really um, what it takes in order to at least see some improvement uh, in your everyday function. Um, and it really, it's it's going to be Walking is a great tool to uh, just get out and switch up your routine and to work on some of those things uh, such as your balance and your everyday uh, activity tolerance. Um, if you feel like, you know, if you have the opportunity to, you know, definitely walk on flat ground. Um, if you're feeling a little unsteady, I'd recommend using uh, an assistive device, walker, cane, whatever it may be, uh, just to make sure that you're safe with walking. Um, definitely track your steps if you can. You can use an activity tracker, a pedometer, something to monitor your progress so that way you know um, what you're, how far you're going or um, what you can do to improve next time. Um, and also if you have access, try you know, using a stationary bike. Uh, it can be a little bit easier on the joints if you are having some joint pain. So here are my top three uh, exercises. These are some of my faves. Um, if anything, with your therapy, it should be functional. So I always try to relate, you know, function with any of the exercises that, you know, we prescribe here or that I may prescribe. Um, and so one of the ones that I really like uh, to give my patients is trunk rotation. Um, it can be in any variety or form, but something that involves twisting side to side. Um, this here, you see the, the model, he's demonstrating a, a trunk rotation laying down. Um, you can also just uh, have a, a seated trunk rotation, so standing, you know, turning uh, right and left with your, with your arms crossed. Um, really easy to do. It helps out with assisting uh, with your mobility, your flexibility, and can also help with normalizing your walking. Um, I'd recommend doing um, around two rounds of, or one round of 10 reps on each side, so 20 total. Um, and do try doing that twice per day. Um, my next favorite exercise is the sit to stand. Um, it's a really functional exercise, uh, really does a great job at targeting large muscle groups, which are, are really important for uh, you know, functional movements, such as getting out of a chair, getting out of a couch, getting in and out of the car, getting out of bed. Um, it's a really easy exercise to do. All you need is a chair. Um, if, as, in the, as you see in the model there, um, she is reaching forward with her arms. You can also cross your arms as well. Um, the important thing with this movement is to have a big lean forward. Uh, I'm sure many of you might have heard uh, nose over toes, but you essentially want to work on that weight shift um, in order to get your weight over your feet and then use those large muscles to stand up. I'd recommend starting with around uh, four rounds of six to eight reps. 
Um, and if you want to make it a little bit more challenging, um, you can just you know uh, hover over the seat when you go down and come right back up, or you can hold a weight if you really, really wanted to make it um, a little bit harder. And my last exercise is the uh, standing march. Um, this movement um, is best done, you know, um, with a, without support or with support, but um, it's essentially a good one to help with working on your balance, uh, working on your hip flexor strength or your hip muscle strength. Um, your, your hip muscle in the front um, works to lift up your leg or clear the ground. Um, that's one thing we see with Parkinson's patients is that tendency to shuffle or maybe uh, have some foot dragging. And uh, what this exercise does is it focuses on uh, weight shifting, um, lifting up one leg, um, in order to work on your balance, but also get your body used to picking up your feet um, when you're walking. Uh, this is also extremely useful if you are, you have to go up and down steps to get um, in and out of your home, or if you if you ever have to go up and down a curb uh, on a walk. Um, it has a lot of uh, functional implications there. If you get any freezing, uh, this exercise it can even be used. You know, marching in place uh, can even be used to help with um, breaking a freezing episode. Um, so. Uh, definitely has a, a big part in Parkinson's rehab. Um, I'd recommend uh, two rounds of 15 on each leg. Um, you can take breaks whenever you need it. Um, I'd have something close by to hold on to just for balance. And so the last thing I wanted to go over are just some uh, Parkinson's resources that you all can utilize. Um, there's Fitness Fridays, which um, can be found on the Parkinson's Foundation website, um, which is essentially a um, exercise class online led by a physical therapist, um, going over different things from boxing to uh, stretching to balance, uh, a little bit of everything uh, in these classes. Um, and you can also find the uh, Fitness Counts booklet, um, which details uh, different things you can do for exercise, along with uh, stretching um, and different programs that you can utilize to start uh, on your journey with moving uh, in order to treat your Parkinson's. Um, here's just a page uh, for some resources that you all can, can check out. Um, everything from you know caregiver resources uh, to also exercise resources and treatment uh, information. Um, it was wonderful uh, spending this time with you all. Uh, please feel free to reach out to any of the resources there. Or reach out to us at UF Health if you have any questions. Um, you everyone stay safe and thank you for your time.